My name is Elder Leon James Ruffin Sr. I'm Senior Pastor of Worldwide Internet, Inc. And I'm glad to welcome you here today. Our God has spoken a word to me, and it hit me, and I pray that it do something in your life. I ask right now in the name of Jesus that the word be manifested from me to you. I speak it right now in the name of Jesus. Let us go in prayer. Father in heaven, we come to you right now, God, in the name of Jesus. Just blessing you, Lord, giving you honors, God, giving you glory. Right now, God, we ask that Leon James Ruffin sing your God, hide behind the cross, God, that the Spirit of the Lord come forth, God, and then not only speak to me, God, but speak through me. Give your people what you want them to have. In this, my prayer, God, in Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. Now, now, I'm so excited about this word. This word was given to me, and it, it kind of, it, it hit me, then it went away from me, then it hit me again. I had uh, preached this word about a year ago, but then God brought it back to me again because it not only was be for you, hopefully, but I know it was for me. If you have your Bibles and you want to follow through on the word of God, uh, turn to Luke, the 18th chapter. Again, I'm going to repeat that very slowly because I want your eyes to be feasted upon the Word of God. And it's Luke, the 18th chapter, and we're going to start at the 35th verse, and we're going to go down to the 43rd. Amen? And the Word of God reads, And it came to pass that as he was come nigh unto Jericho, a certain blind man sat by the wayside begging. And hearing the multitude pass by, he asked what it meant. And they told him that Jesus of Nazareth was passing by. And he cried, saying, Jesus, thy son of David, have mercy on me. And they which went before rebuked him, that he should hold his peace. But he cried so much the more, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stood and commanded him to be brought unto him. And when he was come near, he asked him, what, saying, What wilt thou that I shall do unto thee? And he said, Lord, that I may receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Receive thy sight, and thy faith hath saved thee. And immediately he received his sight and followed him, glorifying God and all the people when they saw it and gave praise unto the Lord. This has been the word of God. For the people of God, and we all say, response by amen. Hallelujah. How many of you will be honest and raise your hands? Uh, if you've asked someone for something, and while you were asking over and over again, it, you got to a point where it felt, and it seemed almost like you were begging. <laughs> now, 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 your need was so great, whatever you was asking for, uh, so bad that, that you realized, my God, I, I'm, I'm actually begging this person. And oh my God, they, they have a smirk on their face. They have a look on their face. They are smiling like, 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 like I'm nothing, like I'm a piece of dirt or something. Have you ever been put in that position? Uh, you are so embarrassed, but you, you, the need is so greater that, than an embarrassment. You just swallow that little pride that you have left, and you keep right on going. Now, 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 you have to be persistent because you was what they call between a rock and a hard place. The pride you just started with has now abandoned you in the midst of begging. Pride just took a jump right out of the closest window that it could. Now, Webster Dictionary, I, I looked it up in Webster Pride and, and also begging. Well, Webster Dictionary told me about proud and pride. Uh, means uh, feeling pleasure or satisfaction over something regarded as a highly honorable or credit able to oneself, having to show self-respect or self-esteem. Now, on the other hand, begging is to ask for some as a gift, as a charity, or as a favor, to beg alms, uh, to beg for, to forgiveness, or to ask someone to give or do something, or to give something unearned. The Bible tells us in Proverbs 16 and 5, everyone that is proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord. I think I need to repeat that because we have, might have some people that don't want to believe that. But I'm going to speak it again to the atmosphere. Everyone, this is God's word, not elder word. Everyone that is proud of heart is an abomination to the Lord. 
<laughs> ah, now you don't want to be an abomination, do you? Uh, so, so that proud of heart, let it go. Some people are so proud of heart that, that, that they, if something is said to them, they hold on to it. They are grudge that they have or something said, if somebody says something, they're going to be so proud in heart just to hold on to it. It is an abomination. Let it go. If you really want God's manifestation, you have to get in a place where you ain't too proud to be. Now, now, Elder, what, what, what kind of topic can you, can you put on this? Well, I just gave it to you. You ain't too proud to be. Now, you might say, that's not good grammar. It's supposed to be, I'm not too proud to be. No, in different situations, you have to get down and dirty, and you have to know the word that sometimes can move things out of the way, even if it ain't correct grammar. Amen? So right now, we're talking about it ain't too proud to be. Now, now let, let me try to help you out a little bit. Human pride is hateful to the Lord. When you think you are bigger than God, when you think you know more than God, if this is taking place, it means you've gotten too big for your britches. You may be smelling yourself a little bit like the old folks say. You may be too grown for your own good and you may need to be shown you are not all, you are not all that. Now Luke 16 and 3 says, Then the steward said within himself, What? Shall I do? For my Lord taketh away from me the stewardship I cannot dig. To beg, I am ashamed. Ashamed to beg. Ashamed to beg. Sometimes you have to put aside pride. You have to sometimes step out of self. You have to leave shame behind. You have to wonder if you can mentally or physically handle the test. You may have to let it all hang out and beg. Look at somebody and say, I ain't too proud to beg. Or look around at somebody else and say, I ain't too proud to beg. I ain't too proud to beg. There was a group a while back they were called the Temptations. Ah, uh, They were also known as the Mighty Temptations. Uh, featuring David Ruffin, uh, along with Melvin Franklin and Eddie Kendricks, uh, Otis Williams and uh, Paul Williams. Now in 1966, the group wrote a song uh, which was titled, Ain't Too Proud to Be. Now I can't speak what was going on in their mind. I can't speak what was going on in the group. Even though I knew them, I couldn't speak on it because I wasn't in the group. But I just wonder if those boys knew they were talking and prophesying to people in the spiritual realm. I just wonder, I just wonder. Ah, because they could have been. I can't speak on it, but I'm going to try to help it out because they had a word of prophecy. But wait, 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 wait a minute. I'm, I'm getting a little ahead of myself. Some of you know about the temptation and some of you are too young. But if you don't know, ask your parents. They were one of the proudest groups in the 60s. Uh, that's when they were singing. I'm not going against the younger generation because they were rapping. I'm just telling you, that's when they were singing songs of melody, songs that will put you to sleep, songs that will let you love. Now, those were the kind of songs that was coming up in my area, and those are the songs that we love. But I don't want to get too far ahead of myself. I don't want to, I'm going to come back to the temptation a little later. But, but right now, we're talking about Jesus. And Jesus was coming near Jericho. Uh, he was approaching the city, and when he entered in the city, Jesus came up to a blind beggar. Now Matthew said there was one, but Mark and Luke said, I mean, said there were two. Uh, now, now, it is possible that it was more than one miracle done that day. Now, 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 being blind will sharpen your other senses, whether it be smell, whether it be touching, whether it be taste or hearing. The blind man heard the, the people and, and knew something was happening. His hearing was intensified. It kicked in the high gear. It was sharpened to its highest point. He listened and asked the people, and they told him Jesus of Nazareth were passing by.